Hi, I'm Joy from Special Fork. I've never been a fan of desserts or sweets, but I always love a good panna cotta. Today we're going to be making a pumpkin panna cotta. And to get started, we have some cold milk in a saucepan. And we'll go ahead and pour in one peck of unflavored gelatin. We'll let that rest for about five minutes, um, just until the gelatin absorbs the milk. So once it starts looking clumpy, we'll know when we can move on to our next step. So moving over here, we have some pumpkin pie mix. Um, it's already seasoned, so if you're looking to use a unseasoned um, pumpkin puree or you want to make one yourself, um, just go ahead and add in about half cup of sugar to your mix. So since ours is seasoned, we'll go ahead and add in a little bit of cinnamon and we want to give that a good mix. just to get it blended here. And what helps is if you put your dry ingredients in first with the puree to get it well mixed before you add in the liquids. Otherwise the, uh, the powder from the cinnamon will clump up once you add the liquid. So it looks like it's well blended. We can add in our milk. You just want to drizzle this in slowly just to get it evenly mixed. And the last thing we have here is the heavy cream. And you can also use a blender to mix all the ingredients to speed up the process, but a spatula will do just fine. And we can whisk this together just to make sure everything is well blended. And that's it. So we'll let this sit for a little bit and we'll finish off uh, waiting for our gelatin to bloom. And we can move on after that. So it looks like our gelatin is now ready, and what we can do now is turn on the stove on low. And what we're doing here is just, just to allow the um, gelatin to fully dissolve into the milk. And you want to continue to stir it so it doesn't clump at the bottom of your pan. And once it's fully dissolved, we can add in the remaining ingredients from our pumpkin panna cotta mixture. So this looks pretty smooth now. Let's go ahead and add in our mix. And let's turn our heat on about medium. And just continue to stir this until you see a low simmer. Not quite bubbling, but um, just as long as you see some steam rising off the top of your liquid, we can turn off the stove and move on from there. So our mix is just about ready. Now we can turn off our stove. Just give that a good mix. Make sure nothing's at the bottom of your pan. And we can ladle in the mixture into our ramekins. And what we want here is about two thirds full. And if you do happen to get any of the mixture at the top of your ramekins, you can just take a wet napkin and wipe it off later. So it's been a couple hours since we first put in our panna cottas into the fridge 
and it looks like they're set. So we can go ahead and finish these off with a little creme fraiche. It just gives it a little bit a different flavor to the panna cotta. So we're just going to make tiny canals here. And we can just top it off into our panna cotta. And for more recipes and ideas on your smartphone, check out specialfork.com.